So we're back in our world, and as of right now, this has become pretty stale, right? We're kind of at this point in this pack that, you know, we have a pretty decent supply of power that we really don't have anything to, to use it on. And we're kind of hitting a point where I kind of just want to show off some of the rest of the mods in this pack. Um, so at this point, we have Batania that I want to get into. Um, there's also the Rats mod, which is some stuff that we can probably mess around with, with there. Um, in regards to maybe helping automate Batania. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of different things we can do there. Um, and we still have some Supremium and stuff to get into mystical agriculture. Of course, we haven't really automated everything, although it would just take me spending a little bit of time to build the essence up and just create some more garden cloches. I mean, that's honestly what I would need to do and just probably use that other room for things that I wanted to be automated. Um, but yeah, I, I've also kind of decorated. I want to spend a little bit of time. I, I kind of sat around and I was like, you know what? I could probably uh, do some decoration. And uh, that's what I did. And I wanted to use some of these things from the midnight. I think they look kind of good here. Almost giving it like a mystical vibe. Um, we have these lanterns laying around. It gives a lot of good light at night. I also went ahead and added these like brick walls to make it feel more nature-y and more, I don't know, rustic. As if these were walls at one time that were broken down. Um, so that's all looking pretty good. I'm trying to get the base looking as good as possible because I want to put this up for a world download for you guys um, when we're done with the series. So that way you guys have something that you can actually download yourself and you can load up this world. Say if you haven't gotten very far and you want to kind of see some of the setups in more uh, more in depth, um, you can do that. I will have a Google Drive link set up whenever this series uh, concludes. So anyways, guys. Um, speaking of concluding series, it probably won't be for a little while. Um, I may end it around episode 50. I don't know, um, but we are getting pretty close to the end. I do want to cover a few more things. Like we are super powerful. I think we have literally the best armor in the game. We have the best sword in the game. We don't have the best bow in the game, even though that would just require me probably getting into Supremium. I think that would be the best bow. Um, I've already moved all my enchants over to my armor, so I really do feel invincible at this point. <laughs> I feel like I'm in like a, like creative mode, like God mode right now. I am like super powerful. Um, but anyways, we want I want to set up um, a few things today. I want to get my wood over here turned into charcoal automatically, and then set that charcoal to be used in our Batania farm because Batania relies heavily early on on charcoal. I, like, I think honestly through the whole thing, in my opinion, charcoal is one of the best ways. And uh, I figure this little area is going to be our Batania area. Uh, now, getting started with Batania does require a little bit of grinding as far as getting the petals and everything go. But I think we should be good. Let's go ahead and head over here. And I'm going to grab my Supremium. We have a bunch of it. Just from just all the episodes where we've just been like messing around. Oh, please don't tear my tree down. <gasps> oh, man, it's going to start tearing my big tree down. Wow, that reaches really far. I guess if the leaves touch, it like finds all the blocks that's connected to it. Anyways, that kind of sucks. There's there's my big tree that I had set up. Maybe it'll leave it. Oh, it leaves it like that. Well, it's ugly now. Anyways, <laughs> I want to use the furnace from this mod because they, they're actually really resourceful. Um, so if we take a look at the furnaces, we we have the, the midnight furnace, which I'm not worried about. Inferium. So all the stuff from mystical, mystical agriculture, and I kind of want to get up to the supremium furnace. And we should be able to do that really easily. Um, this should not be hard at all. Like, we might be able to just craft it here on, on, on screen. Right? No. I'm going to have to probably just make all these blocks and then... Yeah. I'll get this premium. It'll take no time at all. So, yeah. I, I, I should be able to craft it now. There we go. Throw this in there. Where did my f original furnace go? Right here. Okay. Inferium furnace. Then we'll make the Prudentium. Then we'll make the Intermedium. Then we'll make the Supremium, and then we'll make, or sorry, the Superium, then we'll make the Supremium. Look at that, 100% efficiency. Yeah, okay, so so to get this to work, um, conduits, not cod, conduits, should be able to do the job, no problem. Um, I have them laying around in here. I got so much stuff now. Everything's sort of just like flowing into one another. All right. And then I'm also going to need like a storage drawer for a buffer, I think. Not a storage trim. Drawer. There we go. Awesome. 
Um, and let's go ahead and get this set up here. So to do this, we just need our furnace and we need fuel going in. And unfortunately, it needs to go into the top and the side. And then the bottom will be the output. So we do need to separate it a little bit. Um, but over here, we can place it right here. Yep. And we're going to have a little bit of automation stuff going on. A little bit of cable, a little bit of wiring <laughs> laying around. I think that'll be okay. All right, so I'm going to set this to extract, always active. Insert, as always. And over here, we have to have this going and that going. Perfect. And extract. And I'm also going to set this to round robin enabled because I want it to go into both of these inventories kind of evenly, if it can, if it's allowed to. So always active. That'll be on insert. That'll be on insert. We can turn the extract off. And so that's going to just make a bunch of charcoal and that's going to go into there. And that setup is really simple. Look how fast this thing is. This will make charcoal for our setup so fast. Um, it is going to use a bunch of wood, but like this farm is actually relatively quick at farming wood. It has no problem at all. Um, so this charcoal should definitely last. And what we're going to do with this charcoal is actually pump it out of here. Um, we'll probably have another setup right here that is going to connect into this conduit. And it's just going to automatically pull out and go into a item. Um, oh, what's it called? An item transfer node? The wireless item transfer? Or we can even have it go into an inner chest. It really doesn't matter. So much like any aspiring botanianist or botanist, whatever you want to call it, um, you're going to need yourself the book of uh, Botania, the, the Botania guidebook, I would call it. So um, this right here is really nice and has a lot of useful information if you are new to Botania. Um, so if we go back, this is going to list everything yeah, you need to worry about in this. And if you do go through and read it, I have read through most of this entire book and list on every, pretty much every single item. Um, <laughs> so uh, I do recommend you do the same. And the more stuff you sort of um, get into, the more things you'll unlock. And later on, we can unlock even more information that this book will have to offer. But the first thing, first things first, we need to make ourselves some floral fertilizer. Um, and we need a bit of it. As you can see, we just ran out of what, yellow? Um, so dandelions? I always feel like I never have enough dandelions. My goodness. Definitely for this. But once you get some floral fertilizer, you can actually start uh, making way more floral fertilizer. So you just place this on the ground and it's gonna start generating a bunch of flowers. Now, we can grab this brush scythe and this should be able to Harvest these, right? Oh, actually, it doesn't harvest the Batania flowers. Is this one? No. So, I was hoping this would actually harvest. This harvests normal stuff, so like this. It'll harvest large areas. Oh, it doesn't do this. Weird. Anyways, now I guess we gotta do them by hand. Oh, well. Uh, but anyways, um, these flowers, you're gonna need to collect all 16 of them. And uh, to do that, you're gonna need to use that... Uh, that floral fertilizer, but like there's there's two different ways to make it. Of course, you can duplicate these. Um, so if you do have one mystical white flower, you can turn it into a uh, petal, right? We can take some bone mill, not bone mill, bone mill, and some shears. And uh, we can actually duplicate these. So one petal, when bone milled, will turn into a tall mystical white flower or whatever flower variant, and you can throw it inside here and it makes four. So we just turned one into four petals. Now we have five petals and those petals can actually be ground down with a petal uh, and or a, yeah, a pestle and mortal or pestle and mortar. And we can turn that into some white dye. So make sure we have some place down. Make sure we're still collecting them. Doing that. We can convert this into some white dye and it takes four, I think, to make some more of the uh, the floral fertilizer. But then we can use this, the white floral powder, to make the fertilizer. So um, you can have unlimited floral fertilizer from the start. So one of the best ways to know if you have all the flowers, other than just counting if you have 16 of them, 
is to actually make a flower pouch. It's pretty simple, just some dye, and you actually need one uh, petal. And as you can see, I, I'm missing white here, but I already have white from this. So I do know that I now have every single flower. So what I'm going to do is I, I will convert these all into petals and then get rid of the bag because I will never carry this flower pouch again because, you know, it's just just a waste of space at this point. So definitely one of the first things we're going to need in here is going to be the petal apothecary and uh, some buckets. So the buckets, of course, we're going to use that. We're going to fill it with water. Hopefully our purple, purple cow doesn't fill it with lava as I, I you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get two buckets because we need to make an infinite water source anyways. Um, so petal apothecary, slap that down here for right now. And we'll go ahead and get our infinite water source ready for it. I'll just throw that down here. I was thinking about automating this, but then again, I, I don't I don't know if we need to. Um, it's not too difficult to automate this with like a mechanical user. We can totally do that. Um, it is a bit slow though. So it actually might be a little bit faster for us just to do this by hand. Um, and once we get some endo flames, we really don't need to use this much after that anyways. So automating it just really doesn't seem that practical for right now. So one thing you should have a bunch of if you've cleared out as much land as I have, well, that's set seeds. So we're going to use seeds. Um, that's going to be a catalyst for most of our recipes. And as you can see right here, I have some uh, the, of the main flowers we're going to need. Um, we're going to need a, a bit of white petals right off the bat. And then we also need to start focusing on endo flames. So that's going to require some light gray petals, brown petals, and red petals. And of all of those, I have basically covered this whole area and just duplicated a few of them. Um, so what do we need to get now? Well, four petals in here just by throwing them in. And having water in here and then throwing this will get us a pure daisy. And some might be wondering, what's a pure daisy? Well, it's the thing that we are going to use to transform wood and stone a lot. A lot of wood and stone. So I recommend having a, more than one of these. You're definitely going to need more than one. And uh, if you have an empty hand, you can actually right click this with an empty hand. Or I, you, you were. Given that these items are in your inventory like the white uh, petals. Let's see if I can show this again. Go to put the bucket in our inventory. Throw that, do this, place here. If I have an empty hand, it will re-right click those items. And then we can just do this over and over again. It makes it pretty easy. That's why I said it. it's a little bit faster sometimes than the default like automation speed of a few different items. We don't have items that make this automation really easy. So now that that's done, we have few, uh, four pure daisies. We're gonna need to place these in an area that have a little bit of uh, structure underneath. So let's go ahead and make this easier on ourselves. We need stone, just plain Jane stone. And I don't know if I have too much of it just lying around. I might have to go make some real quick. Yeah. There we go, we have a little bit. And then we also need wood. So some regular oak wood, it doesn't have to be oak, but it, you know, oak is definitely gonna be nice. Let's check over here to make sure we have some leftover oak, which we should, right? Or is it literally all been converted? Okay, let's go ahead and pull that out. Um, so let's go ahead and make this setup. Um, since we have ore excavator, it's gonna make this a little bit easier. Um, so what we can do is we can place this. I'm gonna actually set it back here for right now. Um, so we're gonna place a little bit of a ring around. And this just makes it really easy um, to, to do this over and over again. So our flower is going to go in the center. Remember that it does need to go over another slot. So this right here. Oh, it actually needs to be on. It'll be on dirt. This one will be. Look a little bit uglier, but oh well. And then over here, I'm going to do another material. I'm just going to skip a block. And then I'm, the reason I'm breaking the ground is because we need to place it in the ground so that way our base material um, can be changed. So I'm going to use logs for this, just like this, down here. Now, this will not change these blocks, but it will allow me to use the wand to easily place them in here, and it just makes it a lot easier overall. So, bam, we got that done. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a wand, since that is in this pack. And we can go boom. And boom, and this will start converting it 
into two different materials. We have living wood and living rock. And we're going to need a bunch of both of those materials to even think about getting started in this mod. So now that we have the wood we need, bam. And also, I notice I've never seen this. Um, this is a little butterfly, a crystal bug from that dimension, which leads me to believe from the midnight that these cause them to spawn these crystals. They can potentially spawn from these crystals or these cause them to spawn. I have no idea, but I that's really cool if that's the case. Anyways, um, so now that we have <laughs> now that we have this material, um, we need to start crafting with it. Um, so first things first, I want to make myself a wand. Bam. And we are also going to, now that we have this wand pattern set up, we need to choose what colors we're going to go with. I'm going to go with red and white for right now. That should work. Any colors will do. Doesn't really matter just for right now, just for the sake of ease. I'm going to go with this one. And uh, once we have this, we also need ourselves a petal apothecary. Or not a petal apothecary, a mana pool, sorry. Um, and our mana pool is what we're going to be using to get started. Um, and we can also, I think, make a mana spreader. I actually didn't add that in my uh, little thing over here, unfortunately. Um, so the mana spreader just requires one little uh, petal. And bam, we have a mana spreader. Now we need to get mana to our mana pool. And that's where making um, a little bit of a setup is going to take place. We need a little bit of this. A little bit of that and a little bit of that. All right, so there is a recipe for this Indo Flame. It is two brown, one red, and one light gray. And we have all those resources, uh, except for now we have a lava bucket. Isn't there like an infinite watering can? There, there probably is, and I'm, I just I haven't found it yet. Anyways, let's just go ahead and make a water bucket. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, do that recipe. So two brown. One gray, one red, and then we're going to throw a seed in. And we have ourselves an Indo Flame. Our first source of making mana. Um, and I'm actually, I want to use this area, I think, over here for doing so. Yeah, we got plenty of room over here for making mana. So let's take our mana spreader and take our, our one Indo Flame. And we're going to use our wand to link this. So they're going to link here and here. And honestly, if you place your Indo Flame after you've placed your Mana Spreader, it will automatically find the best Mana Spreader to connect to. Otherwise, you can hold down Shift and right click, and then just right uh, Shift right click on the block that you want to get connect uh, be connected to. But you can see we have a check mark that shows that it's there, and it's ready to go. All you have to do is give it charcoal or coal. We have tons of coal, so I'm going to throw a little bit on it. But we do have a system set up for the automation of regular coal. So you can see it just used one and that should eventually start sending over a little bitty bit of mana, just a just a little bit. So we need to beef up our uh, our little setup here. And I actually like to use Petal Apothecaries to set these mana spreaders on because I think it looks a lot better. Um, and I think overall I'm probably gonna have, man, let's see, one, two, we could, we'll probably have like eight mana spreaders all in one mana pool, or at least one mana pool setup. And I'll show you also what I'm talking about there. Because once we get enough mana going, we can actually make the uh, mana splitter, which will allow us to take uh, mana and send it to the middle, and it will fill up four pools that are adjacent. So this is going to be my mana sphere for right now. It is a very simple setup, only four per mana spreader. You could go six per mana spreader, but for right now, I'm just going to go four, just due to the simplicity of the design that I'm going to set up here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take um, some of the pressure plates and just place them right here. This is where our coal is at, or charcoal is at, uh, going to end up, and then we're going to have redstone routed from that point forward. So on top of that, we'll go a open crate. This is from Tanya. This is a very simple redstone setup that I'm about to do. And I do it for each side here. On top of that, I, you know what? I, I'm deb debating whether or not I want to run the redstone on the inner side and scoot this out one. Hmm. You know what? That might actually look a little bit better. 
kind of having the redstone concealed. Let's do that. So all I did here was just move all the crates back one, and that will allow us to get this hopper set up. So here we go. I just have a regular hopper going just like this. Same is going to be on all of these hoppers on the inside. And here's where the fun part starts. We need to get a slab right here, just like this, right on the inside. And luckily we have these here that will allow me to do that. So just like that. Bam. Okay. And then on the inside, it's very simple. Redstone goes down here underneath the hopper. Um, for some reason, it's connected to the of flames. Don't think they work that way, but okay. Maybe you can turn them off. Um, and then we need the redstone to go on top of the hopper. That's going to power the hopper. Very simple. Hopefully this doesn't power the endo flames. If it does, I will move the endo flames over because uh, I don't want them to be turned off. But I have a feeling that that's what that's going to do. Bummer. All right, let's go ahead and finish that. All the redstone set up now. And uh, moment of truth is to take some coal. I'm going to use coal for right now. Is just to take some coal and put it in all four hoppers. And test the dropper. Make sure that it is functioning. And I also want to test and make sure these are going to activate while they have redstone signal. Because that might be pose a issue. Almost looks like it is, is, a, is being a problem. So, you know, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and just move these for now. I just move them back one. They'll still reach. Or move them over one. You know, whatever. So I can move them right here. They'll still be able, they should still be able to reach. No problem. And like I said, it'll choose the best. And since we're only using four per, it's not going to pose a, a big deal at all. So that should be able to function. Look at all of them. A whole manosphere, and eventually all of these will start working. Um, if I was to switch this over to blocks, it would work way better. Um, they, the blocks last a bit longer. It allows everything to start activating. For some reason, I'm not seeing the particles on them. What ones are even activated? Usually there's like some particles showing that they're... They're actually on, but I, I'm not seeing any of them. Either way, I need to throw some of this in here. So just toss it in. And then what I'm able to make is the mana splitter. And then I should be able to just make some mana pools. So I'll make four mana pools. Or I guess three to go with the one that's already down here. And unfortunately, I am going to waste the mana that is currently in here. But I'm not super worried about it. Once all that's set up, and uh, it should all link to this block, which it, I mean, it already was linked. So me just placing it, all the uh, mana now is going to be spread evenly amongst all these. And it's going to need it because when this thing is fully uh, up and running, it's, yeah, it's going to take a little bit. So what am I going to do now? Well, I think I'm just going to set up an item transfer node to pull the charcoal from here and just wire wirelessly distribute it into all of these hoppers. And that's gonna be probably the easiest way to do this. So for this setup, um, since we are kind of working from back here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a separate extract channel on brown, always active. And then this will now be set to brown on insert. And so what we should have is charcoal going inside here, just like that. Perfect. There we go. Man, I really miss my night vision. I know I, I need to get a fisher set up that way we can have that fully automated and I can have cooked fish for the uh, for one of my setups. But anyways, for the night vision pet. Okay, so here we go. Getting all the GPS markers marked. And I just throw these in here and it should fill all the hoppers with that. Once that's completely full, it's completely full and it will pick the ones, I mean, whatever space opens up, of course, it will then go to that. So overall, 
I could grab a bunch of coal and fill the ones over here that aren't completely full. I'll just go ahead and fill them with the coal. And then o over time, they will fill with, uh, with charcoal as things start to work. So there we go. This is basically the best way, I think, to get started with Batania. And it's pretty cheap. Uh, it doesn't really take too much. And the automation is fairly simple. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, learning a little bit about Batania. If you did, of course, don't click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.